Let's give this problem a shot. All right, so given that A equals um, B over 365 times one plus B over 365 to the C divided by one plus B over 365 to the C minus one times D, solve for D in terms of A, B, and C. Now, I realize this looks complicated. I realize you might see it and just be like, nope. But I want to let you know that it's actually way easier than it seems. Okay, I've seen problems similar to this on standardized tests. And if you are enrolled in Algebra 1 and maybe like a pre-calc trade course, you may have to do a kind of a problem like this um, or a similar problem like this. Okay, so let's kind of take a look at what's going on here. So we want to solve for D in terms of A, B, and C. So basically we want to isolate D. Now, this is multiplication. We don't see a sign here, but it's still multiplication. It's implied that it's multiplication. Maybe to make things easier for yourself, you may want to actually write in that sign times, okay? Now, remember, solving for D in terms of A, B, and C, all that means is that you want it to be D equals, and then A, B, and C are on the other side, okay? Um, or if we have D on this side, A, B, and C are over there. Okay, so how do we deal with this? Well, basically, we have D times a fraction. That's all it is. Don't let all of this distract you. Don't let the fraction within the fraction and the exponents distract you. Okay, it's literally D times a fraction. Okay, and actually, if you think about it, I could, to give you an example, what if I just wrote this? Okay, and said solve for D. Well, you would say, okay, that's not bad. Um, I'm going to multiply both sides by two. Okay, check your later denominator over here. Perfect. So then I have 2a equals 3d, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Okay, so I have calculator here, and I have 2 thirds a equals d, and then because I always like to have the um, variable you solve for on the left, we're just going to re rewrite that as d equals 2 over 3a. Okay, and it was that simple, right? If you want to do it in one step, Okay, all we did was we said, well, I don't like this fraction, so if I multiply both sides by 2, check your later denominator, okay? Then I said, well, now I've got 3D, and I just need to divide by 3 to isolate D. So it's super easy. Another thing you may have learned in school, okay, is you can divide both sides by 3 over 2, but I understand that this can sometimes get complicated and students might make a mistake. So what I like to do move that pencil out of the way, is to multiply by the reciprocal, because I think visually we're less likely to run into an issue there. So if I multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 3, check your later denominator, check your later numerator, okay, and then I'm multiplying this by 2 over 3, okay, and so then, sorry, this doesn't need to be here, okay, perfect. So then everything's away. I've got D by itself over here, and then it's just 2 over 3A equals D, okay? So we're going to apply that same principle to this, okay? So I'm going to erase this, and I want you to just think about it, and I'm going to kind of keep this on the side, okay, over here. All right, so I'm going to keep this on the side, let's say, A equals 3 over 2D. I'm going to keep this on the side, and you remember, all we did was multiply both sides by the denominator, so we can check your later denominator over here, okay, and then we divide it by the numerator, so we can isolate D. So we're going to take the same approach here. So we're going to treat this numerator the same way we treated 3, okay? And we're going to treat this denominator the same way we treated 2, okay? So the first step you're going to take is if you want to get rid of this denominator is you multiply both sides by 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by 1 plus b over 365, that quantity, to the c minus 1. We're just going to multiply both sides by that. So then on this side, okay, so if I come up here, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 1 plus b over 365 to the c minus 1, and then times... Um, 1 plus b over 365 to the c minus 1. Okay, so now what I've got, 
okay, is on the left-hand side of the equation, I have, and you know what? I'm gonna put this, I should actually probably put this in parentheses so that we know it is a quantity here, okay? Perfect, okay. Otherwise it could be confusing because of order of, of operations there, okay? So I multiply both sides by this denominator. So now I say, check you later denominator on this side, okay? So on the left-hand side, I'm just looking at one plus b over 365 to the c minus one, okay? And that times a equals, and then what I have left on this side is b over 365, and I actually probably should put a second parenthesis there, times the quantity one plus b over 365 to the c, okay? And then that is times d. Okay, so now remember, I'm trying to isolate this D. I'm trying to isolate this D. So I'm going to take the same approach, okay? The same approach. So here it was just like the three. This numerator is just like this three in this equation. And what did we do after we multiplied both sides by two? We divided both sides by three. So that's all you're going to do. So then we're just going to sit here and we're going to divide both sides by this. So divide this side by B over 365 times one plus B over 365 to the C. Check you later, okay? And then divide this side by B over 365 times one plus B over 365 to the C, okay? Now look, I've solved it, okay? I've solved it. So I'm going to erase because I divided this out, I'm going to erase what I have over here because it canceled out, or divided out, I should say. And all that's left on this side is a D, so I'll erase the D and just make it nice and visible here, okay? So we're done, okay? So we took the same approach as we would have taken with something incredibly simple, which is A equals three over two D. All you have to think about is, it's literally just A equals a numerator, over a denominator times a variable, and then you solve it the same way you would if you broke it down into just a simple fraction like that. Okay? Now, the only other thing I wanna point out is, um, oops, I don't have another parenthesis here, so I should probably do that, okay? Is sometimes you run into a situation, if we go back to the original one, where people see this quantity and this quantity, and because they're the same, they want to divide them out. You can't do that because it's minus one. Okay, if this were multiplication, you could do that, but you can't divide out with addition or subtraction. Okay, um, so that's the only thing I want to point out because that is a mistake that I frequently see with students. And if you were to see something like this on a standardized test, most likely this mistake would be one of the answers. Okay, because that's what they do. They put all the other answers on standardized tests are generally speaking, um, mistakes that can be made throughout the problem, okay? Because that's how they catch you. So here you go. Looked really difficult, turned out to be rather easy, and the only suggestion I have for you is just don't get distracted by all of the variables and the exponents and the fractions and see if you can break it down into something simple. And if you can solve something simple like this, you can also solve something more complex like this. So there you go.